there she is. That's a residential dishy. We'll zoom out. That one comes down and uh, there's its cable there. Runs into this box here. It's just basically a splice and then that white cable's going inside. And uh, yeah, restricted area. Authorized personnel only. We don't fool around back here. This is where we're going to be doing testing today of three Starlink systems together. The residential, as you saw up in the tower, and I have a business system right here. And we're adding to the mix today an RV system. Here's our setup. Got both modems here. There's the power supply for the business system. And um, both of these have Ethernet adapters. I'll show you that in a minute. There's the Ethernet adapter there. That yellow Ethernet cable. I have what I call a peripheral interface box on the outside here. Gives me network coax access to the house internally. My internal network. And then my patch panel in the basement. And I also have the same thing going on over here. The other dish. I ran a cable over to here. Let me give you guys a quick look in this box here. This is my C-band satellite dish. And one of these days I'll do another video on this antenna. But I'm just tapping in. There's a few different network cables here. So I've plugged in the... Uh, the business system is plugged into there. But uh, yeah, my antenna, I have actually elevation motors and azimuth. So I can really pinpoint the satellite antenna when I do C-band. But today we got a lot of ice on everything. There was an ice storm. You can see <laughs> it's kind of treacherous out here today. So I'm going to power this up and uh, we'll get to work on testing and comparing RV, business, and residential. And I'm going to run these also through my gateway that bonds them it's actually a really good way of testing them because it's simultaneously testing all three okay guys hey guys okay so i'm inside now this is uh the power inserter above the flight radar 24 radio that's the uh starlink gen 1 residential the one up on my tower that is its power supply the gen 1's had a separate power supply that put PoE up to the antenna, but it also put a PoE over the other cable, which runs over to the original modem they used, um, and it was PoE as well. These modems were kind of cute, but they were very, uh, very kind of tippy. You know, they weren't, uh, I don't know, kind of funky design, but very, oh, the thing always falls over, but anyways, so the output of that comes to the switch here. This is just, this switch is just for Starlink residential. And from there, I run a cable over to the gateway. I have a few things running through there, but I have all kinds of stuff going on here. I have another, this is my main switch for my house. Big 24 port, port switch. And I got a couple of VLANs. And then over on my rack here, I've got two different networks that I switch. And then in behind there, I have some other switches, some ubiquity switches. And these are all, all different networks. Um, those ubiquity switches are actually connected to this gateway, which is actually bonding together two cable modems, residential Starlink, and if Everything really goes down all at the same time. You see those coax cables coming in? Those are cellular antennas for Bell, Rogers, and Telus. And uh, yeah, this guy's actually got a total of six modems on board and uh, can aggregate three to, uh, six modems. What I do is actually six different carriers, two different cable modems. There's a gigabit modem right there. And I have another one here. So I have two gig uh, download speed and upload is about 66 on these guys right now. 
so together I have over 100 and that, that, those are cable modems then also I got the Starlink and back in July when Rogers was down for the entire day the, the, these are Rogers um, everything I was doing was going over Starlink and cellular and we had a lot going on that day on the rack here I had three different productions so yeah 150 gigs we used that day and it all went over cellular so what I got going on here right now the yellow is the residential Starlink the red is the business Starlink and the orange is the RV Starlink the white comes out the back loops around to this uh, HP computer and the HP is plugged in the KVM all of these computers and servers are all plugged in and I got a double KVM here um, I have one monitor upstairs and keyboard and mouse and I run run everything down here remotely and in the bottom of the rack got a management server and uh, that big APC is a 3000 watt up so it's one of the biggest ones you can get that has a 30 amp circuit coming to it from the electrical panel uh, I can actually show you there it is there big 30 amp circuit and everything including all the modems the telecom system everything in the, all my monitors upstairs even my TVs everything is wired back to this rack I basically broke the circuits out it's also an expanded battery bank there's a bunch of batteries down there uh, those are like 26 amp hour batteries the APC actually has its own batteries but um, yeah this right here this is the battery bank and you got to be really careful when you have a lot of batteries like that so there is an inline fuse right there it's an 80 amp fuse and I also have in that box so that's a hundred amp fuse these batteries are wired in series and that's 50 it's actually 48 but they float up to about I've seen them go as high as 55 when they're floating but I have probably about three or four hours of backup power stored this uh, APC also has a battery bank inside it there's a, a magazine I think it's got about eight batteries in it um, that can be pulled out and it's it's hot swappable too uh, so while it's running you can actually um, and all that gets fed back here that's the circuit right there 30 amp circuit but it also goes through a transfer switch and this connects to a generator if uh, power goes out I have a couple hours of backup power but I can I have an inverter generator it's also 30 amps 3000 watts we can put that online and bring that power in here and do a transfer that'll start to charge back the APC and continue powering all of the equipment here okay guys I'm gonna head upstairs and we'll start doing some testing talk to you later hey guys okay so what we're looking at here is port 1 is residential port 2 is business system and port 3 is the RV system and look at those bandwidth comparisons this is uh, you know what the gateway is actually doing is it's using all three simultaneously these spikes here what you're seeing on the graph these are all speedtest.net tests and they're all to the same server down in Toronto Frontier Network um, so yeah this is you know, the way I'm trying to do this scientific uh, it is a really good way of doing it because even though we're all all three systems are using the same satellite they're using the same uh, uh, available bandwidth on that satellite so but this goes to show you how these systems are prioritized the business system definitely is getting a priority and this is different from what I saw last week I was seeing the business system was comparable to the residential system but I'm not seeing that now uh, maybe there was something set wrong at SpaceX maybe there was some provisioning that had to take place but it's definitely different today 
and um, the antenna is in the exact same place. Um, I, I haven't moved it. It's on the same same spot, same table outside. Uh, the only difference, as you saw earlier, there's um, the RV one out there, but it has nothing to do with this. So what I can show you is individually. First, I will start with that is the residential system. And that is the business system. Look at that. It's much. Last time it was comparable to residential. But look at business today. Hmm. Something has changed. And then you go over, you know, look at the RV system. And it's quite pitiful when you compare it to the business system. Um, yeah, uh, definitely there's some kind of throttling going on there. Um, that is interesting to know. I tested an RV system back in the summertime against residential and I had the same results, but not anymore. This is interesting to note here, guys. Now, when I blend them all in, this is what you get when you blend multiple starlings together um that's the aggregated now if i go over here this is this is starlink residential as you can see starlink business and this was on the upload and starlink rv fortunately this graph goes up to 300 because it's attached to that scale over here and this one hit oh, close to 300 so it's hard to see those upload speeds because of that so i apologize about that but that's just how this software is okay guys there you go it's like we have a little visitor here scratching his head over what's going on <laughs> yeah he's funny he's looking at our uh our starlings here and as you can see, they have oriented, both of them, to the north. I have a pretty good view of the sky there. Um, those two trees also have no foliage on them. The leaves are gone, which uh, is good for radio signals, that is.